Hello, beautiful souls, the Army of Light Earth Division, the boots on the ground. It's Shauna L. Francis, and today is September 10th, 2024. Well, technically it is the 11th, it's 12.08 a.m. This is our weekly Decoding the Living Word Bible series brought forth by Melchizedek. I am a conscious channel of Melchizedek. And they had a hand in a lot of the Bible here, Genesis and Revelation and other parts as well. So uh, we continue this journey together, decoding the living word, really taking apart what's going on in the Bible with some of the most incredible stories that we've ever heard coming straight from the Bible here. And it's a new understanding. It's a new age. Sorry for the plane that's going by. It's very late for a plane to be flying overhead. I'm near Portland International Airport, and yeah. Anyway, we're talking about, actually, so we've been talking about Genesis for the last few sessions, and now we've moved into Exodus, actually. So um, Melchizedek had me read through Exodus, but then it, by the time, it got really late, like 9 or 10 o'clock, and they said, we'll stop here, and I go to start channeling, and they actually want to talk about Leviticus which comes after Exodus. <laughs> so we jumped around a little bit and I didn't even get a chance to read Leviticus really. I've skimmed it now that they wanted to talk about it. But anyway, so it's kind of funny. So I had the best of intentions to sit down today and start this process much earlier than I did. But lo and behold, here it is midnight. I'm making my video. Um, things are just feeling a little busy these days, like not enough time in the day to get everything done that I want to get done. So just curious if you guys are all feeling this way too. Welcome to the new subscribers, anybody who's new to the channel. I'm glad that you're here. You know, we are talking about some really, you know, big topics, some hard topics. Um, today, also, uh, you know, some of these things are coming up. So, um, you know, it's, it's disclosure on a whole new level. We are talking about the ascension. We are talking a lot about the negative reptilian influence here. And, you know, these are, these are difficult things concepts to ingest and to assimilate and to understand and to, to, you know, really find, you know, authentic. So I commend you for being here. And a lot of you have been with me for years now. And this has just been this massive progression over the last five years or so. Now we're talking about the Bible straight from Melchizedek. So it's actually, I'm super excited about it. Um, I know not everybody's super excited about this, but um, it's important what we're doing. We are seeding the collective consciousness with this information. And Melchizedek has something to say about that today. And I'll get into their channeling about the Bible and the teachings for today as well. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into what Melchizedek had to say here, opening some opening comments. We turn a few pages forward, dear ones continuing our talk on the Bible, teaching from beyond the veil, beyond even time and space, seeding the collective with a new understanding, an understanding that is fit for today's ascending audience. We have heard your comments. We have witnessed your reactions to the teachings thus far. We have heard your questions. We have felt your surprise and also your frustration. We are pleased with how this information is being assimilated. Without delay, we continue beyond Genesis, at least for now, and take you to next, the next level as it pertains to the core concepts in the Bible. Once again, we thank you. If it weren't for you, the original intended meaning would be lost. Our consciousness intersects with your consciousness and an expansion occurs. You are, dear, you are ready, dear ones, so we continue. All right. I'm actually quite enjoying the Bible. I'm reading it kind of word for word. I'm not that far in, but it's the most I've ever read of the Bible. And... You know, I, I imagine there could be a possibility that I'll read all of this or most of it by the time this is all said and done. I'm only this far. It's not that. But there's so much here. I was 
reading through Exodus and just feeling a little overwhelmed, like, how are we going to cover this stuff? How do we talk about this stuff? And thank God I don't have to worry about it because I'm channeling the information. Otherwise, there'd be no way. All right, so here's what Melchizedek had to say for today's teaching. Dear ones, we've had this channel, Shauna, read the opening chapters of Exodus, the second book of Moses. Deuteronomy will come next. These passages in Exodus, in Exodus cover a wide range of topics, including some of the most iconic stories ever told. The parting of the Red Sea. The angelic and God counsel to Moses. The Ten Commandments. The plagues and the pestilence brought against Egypt for keeping the Israel Israelites as slaves. Moses and the burning bush, and the insecurity that Moses felt when the Lord asked him to speak on his behalf to the Pharaoh of Egypt. <laughs> I had to laugh at this because he sounds like a lot of us channels or a lot of us who are in these positions like, please, isn't there somebody else you might want to tap to do this because I really am not very quick witted. I don't have a good tongue and I'm really nervous about it. Like, please pick somebody else. <laughs> So I, I had to laugh at that in the Bible. Um, and just to continue here with what Melchizedek had to say, Aaron, his brother, coming into the fold to help bring forth God's messages and to do God's will. Yeah, so there was a lot here. And then <laughs> we don't even talk about Exodus today, but they are going to. All right, they continue here. For today, actually, we would like to focus on Leviticus. These were not the passages read by Shauna today, however... We feel that a few words on Leviticus helps round out where we'd like to take this teaching in this moment. Yeah, when I heard them say Leviticus, <laughs> and I hadn't read it yet, I just thought, okay, we're just going to go with the flow here. Okay, Leviticus, if you haven't read it here, here's what Melchizedek has to say. Leviticus opens with much talk about burnt offerings, animal sacrifice. This is a sensitive subject for many of you who have buried within the collective consciousness memories of acts of animal cruelty for the sake of appeasing a god or gods. Not only animal offerings, but unfortunately, human sacrifice, human offerings, on altars or otherwise. This is a difficult topic, but this is where we'd like to start, dear ones. Right. <clears throat> and they continue. Please hear us when we say, No God represented here in these teachings, no representative of the light, requires a flesh and or blood offering to appease God or prove devotion. The bloodletting practices as described in Leviticus and many other places throughout the Bible originate from long-held beliefs that the ability to take the life of another, whether a bird, a goat, a cow, or a child, proved dominance and superiority on this plane. And they continue here. The delineation between inferior life and superior life did not originate with within humanity. In fact, as evident with many ancient belief systems within your indigenous peoples, clear, loving, and respectful relationships can exist with all creatures, all living things. The natural state for humans is more of a reverence for all with the breath of life, a curiosity, a partnership. While this mindset, this idea of dominance and superiority over all of other living creatures, great and small, didn't originate within humanity, it was, certainly, it was certainly perpetuated through the centuries. It was a belief system that was passed on from generation to generation, which was all part of the normalization process for these acts. You know through previous teachings that bloodletting, blood fear, 
subjugation are core aspects of the negative reptilian regime's agenda. What better way to normalize these practices than to concretize them within the Bible? While much of the animal sacrifices as described in Leviticus have stopped, these practices do continue, but more in the shadows or hidden away from mainstream society. All right. So you come even like through Genesis, through Exodus, and then Leviticus, man, I mean, I just skimmed through it after this channeling. You know, it is very focused on here's how you do this. Here's the right way to do it. Um, it's kind of mind boggling, actually. So um, we talked a little bit more about this and I had um, I had a question. I had some questions for them here. All right, so they continued on. Okay. They said here, the concepts in Leviticus were put forth by the deacons of the era. And believe it or not, they thought they were providing a great service by explaining in detail how to go about these offerings. The animal sacrifices were happening, but there was a lot of confusion on the best way to go about it. and the right way to go about it. And these teachings gave people a template and guidelines that had been sporadic up to that point. Okay, well, you know, my, my, and my question for Melchizedek was, okay, you know, obviously this was attributed to Moses, like, here's what God says you must do to appease God. Um, and here's exactly how you go through these different rituals. <coughs> um, but really, they're saying the bulk of Leviticus was written by religious deacons at the time, not Moses. Um, and for a general time frame, they said 500 years before Christ. And it had been, and the text had been circulating at times, at the time in various formats in the general vicinity of Europe. Okay, so a little bit more information about Leviticus. Now, um, I didn't ask them who had written Exodus. I assume actually don't want to assume anything, but they had talked about being the authors of Genesis and again, Revelation as well. We haven't gotten to Revelation yet. Okay. All right, team. So, you know, not surprising for most of us who've been around this channel for a while, the Galactic Federation of Light, Melchizedek, and others have talked at length about um, the negative reptilian regime's plans, programs, the infrastructure in place, the brainwashing, um, Queen Elizabeth, she's also come, came through. I had 44 sessions with Queen Elizabeth. Um, was that last year? Yeah, last early last year. If you hadn't caught any of that yet, really how um, the rituals and the bloodletting, um, how that happens at the uppermost echelons of society there in the royal bloodlines. Um, so this stuff is really terrible. But, you know, it sounds like Melchizedek just really wanted to kind of, you know, tackle this one right now. Make sure that it was well understood that this is not part of the original teachings for the Bible. And this was inserted by religious deacons of the time. And um, yeah. And, and again, you know, Melchizedek also talks a lot about we have been a party in accord with the negative reptilians agendas to some degree. Now, yes, they are exploiting our ignorance and our innocence here. And there's a lot of manipulation happening, but they do just enough of kind of, you know, disclosure here, letting us know what's going on. It's kind of hidden in plain sight to where they've gotten around a lot of the laws that talk about thwarting free will here. Um, so kind of these animal, this ritualistic animal sacrifice stuff, um, not originating with humanity, but with the negative reptilians back in the day. But really, it's something that we adopted and that we took as truth and we continued to do with or without that influence. Um, and it's still going on as, they, as they've said, this stuff is still happening today. Not quite in the same way, but it is still happening. Okay, that's really where we wrapped it up, team. It's a short video tonight. Um, but again, we're going to be getting into some pretty heavy things here. The Ten Commandments, the parting of the Red Sea, 
all these all the all these things that are um, part of Exodus, and then we'll get into Deuteronomy. So the fun continues. All right, guys, how's everybody doing? Let me know in the comments. Um, again, for me, it's just feeling very like I'm just feeling very busy. Um, like by the time I hit the pillow, I'm exhausted. So um, like it feels like a contraction of timelines or contraction of time in general and not feeling like there's enough time to do everything I want to do. Also feeling like moving through the end of the year is going to be very busy. So um, kind of gearing up for 2025. I don't know exactly what that means yet, but I'm just feeling like the train on the tracks is picking up speed and we're kind of chugging along a little bit faster here. Okay. Thanks team for being here. You're a beautiful community. I love you. I appreciate you so much. I hope you're all doing amazing. Keep doing the great work that you're doing. Put yourself work first. Make sure that you are making time for joy and peace and love and harmony and touch and um, meditation and connecting with your guides and connecting with Melchizedek and with your own energy system. Be selfish now, team. Put your joy first here. Do what you can do to make sure that you are feeling good and um, enjoy as much as you can. All right. I love you. We'll catch you next week. Mwah.